When I was younger, I thought I'd find the perfect partner. We'd have the white picket fence, make babies. And then I was single for a really long time. And I'm still not in a relationship, and I'm also not 20. So I started talking to other single parents to really hear about their experiences. I thought that I would see really sad, broken people, but I saw really happy, strong, empowered women. Most of these women were queer like me, so I thought, yeah, I'm gonna go for it. Hi, I'm one of the nurses here at this clinic. I have two wonderful children and I love my job. Helping people have children is a beautiful thing to be part of. But you know, way back when I was in nursing school, they didn't teach us about how to work with LGBT people. Oh, I mean, LGBTQ people. All I learned about was heterosexual infertility. I learn a lot on my job every day. I see here that you haven't indicated which sperm bank you'll be getting your sperm from. Yeah, I'm still trying to find the right sperm donor. I'm Métis, trying to find a Métis donor. I'm not sure there's a whole lot of options to choose from in terms of sperm donors. Well, you can let us know when you have decided. Do you have any questions about these services that we offer? Uh, yeah, I'm concerned about the cost of the insemination. I couldn't find the prices anywhere on the website. Well, it will really depend on which routes we follow. How well you respond to treatment? How many tries? We really can't say until we begin and run some tests. I mean, I don't know that I can afford it, so I need something. I'm going to be coming from Goddard, so I'll have transportation costs, hotel costs, and I have to miss work. Can you tell me how many visits I might have to make? Visits? No. An estimate? Well, you're looking at anything between seven hundred and ten thousand dollars but it could go higher. It's different for everyone. I'm going to explain to you some of the procedures. While you look for your sperm, we can get you started on your fertility counseling. We'll need to do some diagnostic tests, see that your uterus and fallopian tubes are healthy and working properly. We'll need to do some blood tests, ultrasounds, a hysterocelpingogram possibly, and when you do have your sperm, we may have to put you on some medication which will help your body make eggs. Okay, I didn't quite follow all of those procedures, but I don't think I'm going to need any drugs. I know that I'm fertile. It's really to provide you with the best odds. We know that it can be expensive. Okay, thank you. But I'm really not interested in all these drug treatments and tests. I just came here for the insemination part. Well, the insemination is best done after we make sure that you're fertile? I really don't believe that all of this is necessary. I am not interested in drug treatment. Miss Lalonde. I am not infertile. It just happens that I don't have a male partner. Miss Lalonde, there's no guarantee that this will work. I know that can be frustrating. If time and money is such an issue, as a bisexual woman, you may want to look at some auctions outside of the clinic. <laughs> the old-fashioned way. 
Just something to think about. I'll get the doctor for you. So the nurse tells me you have some time constraints. Well, it's really the costs and the travel, which I'm really not sure about. Could you give me an estimate? Oh, well, I can tell you what's wrong with you. He took one long look at me and said... Polycystic ovarian syndrome. About 5 to 10% of women of reproductive age have this condition. It's related to obesity. Uh, now, I can do some tests to confirm it, and if I do confirm it, then I can provide you with a drug that'll help you lose a lot of weight. And if you lose a lot of weight, it'll be easier to become pregnant and the benefit of losing weight. I didn't come here for drugs. I came here for an insemination. We can do an IUI. I'll need to run some tests. And I noticed here, when you were 16, you had an STI. You may have an obstructed fallopian tube. And because I really wanted to have a baby, I agreed. After what felt like a million invasive tests. Well, the bad news is you don't have PCO. How is this bad news? Well, the treatment's not going to work. If you had PCO, then I could prescribe you a drug for diabetes. We're going to have to try a completely different route to get you pregnant. So people who don't work, or people like me who work part-time, people like me who don't have disposable income, that is not who the clinic is for. So they were always surprised when I didn't have money just like this for things, as if I was somehow not prepared. Not having access to sperm is a really different thing than using sperm to get pregnant and having trouble. I'm not infertile, I just don't have a male partner. I haven't even tried to get pregnant yet, and they're offering me drugs and tests. I just don't understand why I can't try. These, these were made from comments that you actually received from people? Yeah, I have to say my first response was like, I cannot believe that any scene would actually, would actually go down that badly. You know when you go in that there's, uh, if there are 10 people in the waiting room, nine of them are uh, women with their husbands who were having whatever trouble that they were, and then there was us. Uh, and it was kind of obvious that our situation was a little bit different. Uh, so it's just uh, for the professionals there to have that knowledge that uh, they can change gears when they're talking to someone with a different situation. The nurse in this particular video didn't ask her anything, didn't ask her any questions, didn't ask her what her life would look like, you know, whether it was going to be an anonymous donor, did she have a donor, they don't, the clinics really still don't know what questions to ask. I get that the fertility clinics are most of the time assisting people who've had difficulty conceiving naturally, but um, that was not us. Mm -hmm. and. Um, I think they don't tailor their approach or their methods depending on the person in need of becoming pregnant. They don't just use the same approach for anyone, if that's what it felt like. Like I just felt like my body became this object that I had no control over and it was just such a powerless experience and I felt like I was just tied up in all of this bureaucracy and I thought that this was going to be such a wonderful time, like I want to be a parent, like I'm creating my child. This is not the process. This is not like, this is not how you create a child. Overall, I had a good experience, I must say. I find that the doctor that I dealt with was very straightforward. Um, give you the straight goods, um, told you what your options are, what the process was. Um, all of that was given to me right from the very beginning. I wasn't prepared for the fact that they were going to um, require or strongly suggest all these invasive tests. What resonated with me in that video most strongly was the idea that you walk in, you kind of want some information, you kind of want to know how it works because you, this is a relationship and you need, you need the clinic to help you um, in certain circumstances. And this phrase was in my head, my fertility issue is that I don't have sperm. And I kept saying that to her. And she's like, yes, but we can't rule these things out. Like, I just wasn't prepared for her rigidity. Um, in my case, and in the case of this particular video, I had never tried to get pregnant. Um, 
I had no, uh, no, no thought that this would be a problem. So the idea that I would have to have all kinds of tests or take medications or spend $10,000 was sort of extraordinary. I guess the other thing that it brought up uh, is around money uh, and the the concept of uh, assuming that everybody there is from a particular socioeconomic background. Uh, so there were a couple of times where we would be paying for drugs uh, or something at the, the cashier on the way out, uh, and it just seemed um, so nonchalant of how much money was supposed to be uh, applied to any situation or for any drug that sometimes for me it felt like, is this normal for people to just be handing over that amount of money? I want to be treated like the next person, equal, you know? Not being pathologized or looked down upon. I want to be in a place that recognizes me as human, not like something is wrong with me. Make it more geographically accessible. Financial accessibility. OHIP should be covering assisted reproduction. Don't assume I'm infertile. Don't assume I have a wife. Don't assume I have a husband. Please just don't make any assumptions. 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 Let us tell you who we consider part of our family. Be honest about what you don't know. Ask us questions in a respectful manner. And listen to our answers. Learn about how queer families have children. How about some gender neutral washrooms? Address systemic barriers. This is one of the most important moments in our lives. Celebrate with us. Celebrate with us. Celebrate with us. Celebrate with us.